Hello everyone, uh, this next game I'm about to show you was played in 1962 uh, Soviet team championship between the one and only Rashid Nejmetdinov and Oleg Chernikov. And uh, in my opinion, uh, the beauty of this game can rival that of any game in chess history. Uh, well, I'll, I'll have to show it to you and then you can decide for yourselves. Uh, Rashid Nejmetdinov is white and Oleg Chernikov is black. So let's see this game. Rashid plays e4, c5, knight to f3, knight c6, d4, c captures on d4, knight captures on d4, the Sicilian defense. We have g6, knight to c3, bishop to g7, bishop to e3, knight to f6, bishop to c4, black castles, bishop to b3. And if you've seen my game between uh, Bobby Fischer and Ruben Fine, maybe you remember that in this position Ruben played knight to a5, going for this light square bishop, and Fischer destroyed it uh, with this e5 move. But uh, in this game, uh, Oleg Chernikov uh, chose a different approach. In this game, uh, Chernikov played knight to g4. He decided to go for this uh, dark square bishop on e3, and also uh, he opened up the attack on this knight on d4. So on uh, knight to g4, uh, Nejmedinov plays queen captures on g4, uh, knight captures on uh, d4, and now queen to h4. <clears throat> uh, so uh, Chernikov plays queen to a5, uh, pinning that knight on c3, and uh, Rashid castles. So in this position we have bishop to f6, and in this position uh, Oleg Chernikov thought that uh, well, uh, Nejmedino would probably realize that uh, this is a drawn position and he would uh, offer a draw. So as the story goes, uh, Chernikov went for a walk and he was uh, enjoying his stroll and checking out some of the other games. And he thought that, well, uh, the only thing Nejmedinov can play is probably queen to h6. I'll just repeat bishop to g7, then again queen to h4 and I'll repeat bishop to f6. And if he plays something like queen to g3, well, then Chernikov has this idea of playing uh, queen to c3. And after the queen is captured, then knight to e2 check. So we have king to h1 grabbing the queen. And uh, this is better for black as white's uh, pawn structure is all messed up. But even if this is playable for white, it would still be a, a very long drawn game probably. So after Chernikov played this bishop to f6 move, uh, the story goes that uh, Rashid was uh, thinking about the position for some 40 minutes and that a very excited boy uh, ran off, uh, ran over to Chernikov and he said, uh, well, mister, he sacrificed his queen. And as Chernikov rushed back to the table, he saw that Rashid played queen captures on f6. <clears throat> and this is a move, well, I mean, I, I always look for these kind of moves and uh, I don't think I would, I would... I would play this or even or even get an idea like this. So let's see how the game continues. Uh, obviously uh, Oleg Chernikov will accept the queen but uh, first he plays knight to e2 check uh, just to discoordinate white's pieces for a bit. So knight captures on e2 and only now e captures on f6 and Rashid brings his knight back, knight to c3. And okay look at this position. Uh, if you ask an engine, engine will say okay black is better but uh, okay you have your queen on a5 as black but uh, white has these two bishops uh, eyeing that king on g8 and he has a potentially very dangerous knight uh, that's ready to jump to d5 nothing can oppose him uh, and black's rooks are undeveloped uh, his bishop is still undeveloped and uh, well let's see how Chernikov handles this. So Chernikov plays rook e8 and Rashid uh, defends this pawn on e4 actively. He plays knight to d5. So now the pawn can't be captured because of knight f6 check. So uh, Chernikov plays rook to e6 and now Rashid plays bishop to d4. Again going for that f6 pawn. So we have king to g7 defending the pawn and we have rook a to d1 activating this rook. So we have d6 preparing to develop the bishop and uh, Rashid plays rook to d3 prepares for a nice rook lift to f3. Uh, bishop to d7 and now rook to f3 again going for that f6 pawn. So we have bishop to b5 attacking the rook on f1 but Rashid first plays rook, uh, bishop to c3 attacking the queen on a5. The queen moves to d8 to help with the defense of the f6 pawn and now we have knight captures on f6. So we have bishop to e2 and in this position, well, this was the probably the losing move, bishop to e2. 
in here black has to admit that he's not better and that he should probably play something like uh, rook a to c8 and uh, well continue this game but he plays uh, bishop to e2 and after bishop to e2 allows Rashid Nejmedino to play this beautiful move knight captures on h7 and uh, what's the idea of knight captures on f7 well uh, if you look at this position if uh, the knight is captured then look at this strong bishop's diagonal and look at this rook going to h3 uh, it would be extremely dangerous for black so uh, Oleg Chernikov plays king to d8 uh, king to g8 and now Rashid plays rook to h3 so we have rook to e5 uh, Oleg Chernikov would love to exchange this rook for this uh, amazingly strong dark square bishop uh, but Rashid plays f4, he's not interested in the rook. So Chernikov plays bishop captures on f1 and king captures on f1. And still now this uh, rook is attacked on e5 by the pawn. So we have rook to c8. And now again Rashid does not capture the rook with the f-pawn, but he plays bishop to d4. He's protecting this bishop like it's made of gold. Uh, so we have b5 and now we have knight to g5. Uh, we have rook to c7 protecting that f7 pawn and this is where Rashid goes all, goes all out he plays bishop captures on f7 with check rook captures on f7 and now we have rook to h8 check king captures on h on h8 and now knight captures on f7 forking the king the queen and the, the rook on e5 so king to h7 Rashid grabs the queen on d8 rook captures on e4 knight to c6 protecting the bishop Rook captures on f4 with check, king e2, and in this position Oleg Chernikov finally resigned. And uh, if you look at this position, uh, white has two pieces for the rook and he's also a pawn up, but uh, black has three pawn islands and uh, well, it will be it will be impossible to play this uh, as two pieces by themselves are stronger than the rook and uh, white's pawns are much better. So yeah, an amazing game and uh, what an amazing guy, Rashid Nejmedinov. Uh, Lav Pologaevsky said once that uh, he beat Nejmedinov at least a dozen times, but the one game that he lost to Nejmedinov was so beautiful that he would trade uh, all of his 12 other games just to be on the side of the board when uh, Ra Rashid defeated him to have those pieces. And uh, Mikhail Tal once said that uh, Losing his game against Nejmetinov in 1961 was probably the best day of his life. So yeah, uh, I don't think I will ever do uh, a video uh, solely about Rashid Nejmetinov. As like I always say, you should all, you should check out a video made by Jessica Fisher. So type Jessica Fisher to YouTube and check out her video about Rashid Nejmetinov. It's an amazing video. Uh, I'm sure you will enjoy it. It's in three parts, so. I think all in all it's maybe 30 minutes long so yeah that was that was the game uh, well now you can tell me if you agree that it's definitely one of the most beautiful games ever played and uh, as usual you can check two of my previous videos here and uh, I'll see you soon